Hello and welcome to a special episode of Before Our Friends Die, where we get to review Season 2. Love it. So first of all, we've got to start this by saying thank you so, so much to anyone and everyone who's tuned in to Season 2 to enjoy the ride with us. Thank you to all of our guests. That includes Ty Cell, Yuma's Kitchen, uh, Jerome, Evie, and I think that's it. Yeah, I want to say that. And let me quickly quick, yeah, quick I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Ronald? No, Ronald's in season one. Season one, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald just got a free shout out. But thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you to everyone who listened with us. We really appreciate you. And um, well, you know the score. We've got a thousand listens now as well. Yeah. We? yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. We now have a thousand listens. So Rochelle and I had a goal when we started this that by the end of the year, we wanted to have um, 1,000 listens on our shows across the board. And we've achieved that. And that is only possible with your help. So really, really thank you. We're so grateful. And um, let's get stuck into the yeah, review. Shout yeah, shout out to you lot, man. Take care. Goodbye. Right, so Rochelle. Yo. We wrapped up season one by talking about each of the episodes. Mm-hmm. And season two. What episode did we start on season two? We started with a UFC um, 275 preview and fight world recap. 275. So for sensei's. Yeah, yeah. So, 275 was, let me just check, that was, this is episode 7 of Super Sensei's we started with, and 275 was, come on. He was fine on that card. I'm trying to find out. It was, oh yeah, Yuri Prohaska versus Glover Teixeira, where Yuri secured a submission of, of Glover in like the last 30 seconds. Is that so, the granddad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember It was it. a wild, it was yeah. a wild fight night. Um, great one. So yeah, that was what we opened up with. Again, Sofa Senses has really taken a life of its own in season two, I think. Um, you know, we cover the fights as they happen. Um, we review them the day after. And I think that's a good process we've got going there. Yeah, we're trying to do like, I don't, I don't want to say goggle box, but yeah, goggle box, watch it live, give our live reaction on it. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, the first episode of, of Yuma's, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Give it away. The first episode of Before Our Friends Die in season two yeah. was Yuma's. Yeah. That was an episode we recorded months and months ago, but we knew it was a good episode. We wanted to wait for the right time to get that out. Yuma's released their, or opened their Milton Keynes branch, and we made sure we got that out in time for that. And they were doing a lot of um, the community um, the community work in Kenya, mm. and we made sure we aligned our release with that as well. So big shout out to Yuma's for all their um, interaction with that. They loved the episode. I spoke to Mo. I spoke to Yasa. I spoke to Salim. They all loved the episode. Um, when we, we caught up on what we can do next, there's so many things in the pipeline that we can cover for Yuma's as well. Mm. Um, obviously, we only wish Yuma's success in their business. And they're great guys. So so thank you for having us on. Yeah, shout out to them, man. They've done sick, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a short amount of time they've done so good. Well, that's, it. that's hard work, man. They, they put mm. the work in. They built the brand. They, they, you know, they work with um, uh, communities, they support them. They're doing great things. Um, also, that episode as well was, I think, our most interacted bit of social media. So we, we said something like, tag three people you're excited to hear, to hear this with. And, um, you know, we got a lot of tags. Yeah, so it shows the power on yeah, man. Of, of humans there. Um, it was the first episode we paid for promotion on. Yeah. Um, we paid Instagram £60, I believe, to, to um, get us some... Uh, impressions and some clicks. Do you think it was worth it? No. Hell no, it? No, we, we got, I think we got in total 14 episode clicks from £60. Um, I suppose it isn't bad. Mm, we got, got we got something like 15,000 impressions though, like a lot of impressions. Um, not the so You say 15,000? Yeah. Sometimes I just feel like they're just fake numbers that they can give Like 15,000 really means eyes and that could have been 0.1 second. Yeah, we, you just scroll up, don't you? Yeah. Because sometimes we get ads on Insta now, don't we? Exactly. Scroll right. up could have easily been that so but i mean yeah it was a great experience learning how that all works and, and what we can do better mm. you know and designing things that work as ads and that sort of stuff um enjoyed it learning curve that's for sure what are your reflections on the humans episode it was it man it was just like having a combo of old school mate in it because what yes i went to our school and literally everyone in you must we pretty much know don't we mm. he's given all the youngers jobs and yeah most of our mates work there don't they so it's just cool, man. And they show you love anyway, so we're showing them love on the pod as well. Mm. When you walk in there, man, it's always love. Next in the series, we had UFC 275 recap, and we talked about John Jones. You know, with the old guy and, and Yuri Prohaska securing the win in the last 30 seconds, 
just how good is John Jones and how much would he have won by if he was in the cage that night was our topic of conversation. Daniel Dubois won the WBA regular heavyweight championship of the world <laughs> on his Don the King show. Don King show. Um, yeah. As of now, Don King has paid. Has he paid him? Yeah, he has paid him. Yeah, uh, but but up until force. up until a few weeks ago, he hadn't paid him for this, and this episode was released. How much was it? Uh, on um, the twelfth of June. How yeah. much was the purse? How much? Uh, one point four mil. That's not bad, you It's know, not man. bad, but he had to pay £900,000 in fees. What? Uh, I've got an article in the Boxing News. I'll show you it. It's in, that, it's in there. But basically... So he made 1.2, 900k, 1.4, Oh my, that's a lot, man. Is that Donkey? Don, um, Don King? Mm, so it was, it was... That guy is a shag, man. Like, it was, bro, it was a lot. Like, I have to... I'll, actually, I'll explain it to you, but it was a lot of, like, weird stuff. And maybe we'll break it down, actually. But that's like how um, UFC as well, isn't it? See what? Go in that top draw. We'll do it now. We'll do it's it now. like UFC. UFC, they have like um, 10% goes to your like trainer. Manage, well, gym, more than that, yeah. Your gym, top draws. Yeah. Which uh, under all of that stuff, there should be a boxing news under that. Um, sorry, this isn't great listening, guys, but there we are, that one. Good yep, that one. Good yep. Boxing yeah. Right, so let me find out. One second. Daniel Dubois, let's get to the air. Uh, Don King still moving mad. Right, so um, Don King Promotions won the purse bid for the Daniel Bryan versus um, Daniel Dubois. Sorry, Trevor oh. Bryan versus Daniel Dubois. Mm-hmm. Fine. Um, 3.116 million. Yeah? 3.1. That's a that's large um, change for Eddie Hearn, isn't it? Given the, yeah, exactly. Given the um, split of 45% for Dubois, that gave him 1,402,200 dollars um in terms of a purse yeah mm. of that let's get to the fees um there were expenses deducted by dkp donking promotions mm-hmm. dubois consent was given for these deductions so here it is the wba um along with the standard procedure got three percent of that 1.4 million that was 42 grand mm-hmm. that's the sanctioning fees for the belt okay so you know how much money these belts make if aj is making silly money and they oh. get three percent yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what else? Oh, they would get like basically a mil. And how many belts are there? Dubois, a foreign national fighting in the US, is subject to US taxes of about 30%, which is 420 grand. No, I don't get why it gets taxed over there, though. You should get taxed is, at your um, this, home country. This right? is as per the, the yeah. belt agreement, yeah. Okay. Um, Dubois' manager also had to pay. $1,200 for a WBA manager's license fee. <laughs> uh, Dubois agreed for that to be deducted from his purse. Yeah, go on, he's got his manager card. Um, Dubois agreed to allow a deduction of 475000 to be paid to Donkin Promotions in exchange for Queensbury Promotions acquiring the live television rights of the bout. Basically, BT Sports showed it in the UK and Daniel Dubois paid for that pleasure, which is wild. I'm t- I take so it. he paid BT 400 okay. No, he paid Don King, yeah. who owned the rights to the fight. To give to BT. 475 grand yeah. to showcase it on BT in the UK. I'm guessing Did he BT any- would have paid him the money for that. Does he get back? Because why is he paying for his fight to be shown? That's not how... That's not how it works, works, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I take it he'd be... He must get getting some back-end profits, yeah. if there was any profits on that. No, I don't. Um, thus... There was a whopping $938,000 in deductions and Dubois was owed just four hundred and sixty-three grand out of the original $1.4 million. And he hasn't been paid that by Donkey. That's dead. Shout out to the Boxing News and shout out to who wrote this. Uh, Kurt Emhoff or Emhoff for writing this on, um, yeah. Boxing I didn't News. know, in theory, I didn't know um, Daniel was getting that much money. Well, that, that's rare, bro. That's rare. It was, isn't it? Because rare. he's not really there, is he? Like, there I mean... Yet. How old is he? He is he's twenty five. He is the star they're trying to build. He's twenty five. He's the star they're trying to build in um in Queensbury alongside Joe Joyce. Um yeah. And I'm sure he makes a lot of money. But I don't know if he makes one point four million in a fight. No, he doesn't, man. He definitely doesn't man. After that we, we released um Get to Know Yasser. And that was a really interesting episode because again we ask all of our guests the same questions on these sorts of episodes whereby we try and get to know who they are and what they're about. And it's really interesting to hear, you know, Yasser's uncle is a CFO, but also in terms of who inspires him 
and you know he's at his best when he is and the things that he does to ensure that he he does what he needs to do to make humans a success and his life a success as well um really interesting him from nasa so thank you for your time there next we had a fantastic episode actually from born trouble to titles introducing mm, yes. ty cell man like ty cell yeah man shout out ty cell that was a sick episode man really great to get him in in the uh the studio talking about his career where he wants to be where he's been with that episode actually we had some mic problems do you remember um, yeah we were sharing a mic weren't we yeah yeah so yeah, we, yeah, we had to share, yeah. rochelle and i had to share a mic because we couldn't get the third one to work at the time we've now sorted that issue mm. and that won't happen again but we still got an episode out of it it was a great episode it was over an hour long i think at that point it was our longest ever episode um and the support i think it was a sick episode yeah it? yeah yeah and hopefully he prospers and makes it man he will man he will yeah, like 100%. you can see he's, he's training the right mindset, isn't it? he's always sparring his mindset's right he's full-time as well so he, everything is 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 in the right place for him to be able to do what he needs to do so good luck to ty Cell. we're in your corner and he's um, young as well man yeah he's, he's very literally young. got time on his hands what was interesting as well is as with nico's episode um mm. uh, Often what we see on the analytics is an episode, when it comes out, shoots up mm. and it sort of, you know, drifts off as time goes on, which is understandable because the new one keeps coming out. With Ty Sell's episode, it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. And at some point, not right now, because uh, the last episode of season two did overtake it eventually. Mm. But at this point in particular, um, it was the fastest growing episode of Sofa Sensei's uh, with the most listens. So I think it's because of all the people at Shoebox. Exactly. It? 100%. Shoebox is definitely a community and um, we, we feel it on the numbers. So thanks to those guys. Hopefully we can get some more of you on. We'd love to co cover some of your events and go there live. Um, Sofa oh, Sensei's, that's what we do. And we said, oh shit, man, it's my bad, isn't it? Because we did say we were meant to do a session at um, Shoebox. Give it two weeks. Let yeah. me finish my thing. That's and then what we've we got to do. do, yeah. do. Life gets in the way, isn't it? Mm. UFC 276 preview and boxing news was next. Let's find out what was on UFC 27. Oh, that was Israel Adesanya versus Jared Kalanir. Um, That was a pretty uneventful uh, card, I think, if I remember right. Is that the one that he sh looked like he lost but won? No. No, no. that one, that one. No, nah, he, um, he won the fight. He won it comprehensively, but it just wasn't exciting as a fan. Um, we can move on from that. But again, I think what's really good and what's really enjoyable about season two is we're able to do what we want, right? So if we want to cover a live event, we can cover it. It's not mm. a problem. And then, um, you know, we get those things done. What's really difficult, I think, with those things is obviously finding the time where Rochelle and I can both get in the same room. I think that's fair to say. Um, oftentimes, life gets in the way, mm. jobs get in the way, and we have to make a decision whereby, okay, I can cover this episode and make sure it gets out, you know, when it needs to be out. Next, we have the the uh, the review. What's next for both champs? This is where we saw uh, Volkanovski just dominate Max Holloway, and um, I think it was a really interesting uh card because where the hell does max holloway go next but also does um volkanovsky move up to 155 to fight charles Oliveira for the title maybe obviously you've got islam makhachev um uh, fighting for the title next but it'll be yeah. interesting to see how volkanovsky there's a few fights is. coming up isn't it yeah september's of his month which is why we're taking these weeks off yeah um, next i know wait it's the third of september i think things fight in Yusuf. Nate Diaz and um, Yusuf is fine as well. Is he? Yeah. Shout out Yusuf Ibrahim. Yeah. I think I think he's. I'm sure, I'm sure he uploaded on the third of September. I'm sure. Oh yeah. He. So you got Robert Whisker versus Marvin Vittori on the third of September in terms of UFC. I don't know who's boxing on the third of September. Mm. Um. And then obviously you've got Yusuf Ibrahim fighting. So yeah. Good luck yeah. to him. And when's the Canelo fight? Seventeenth. Mad. It's gonna be a good month. Creeping up. Um, then I like this episode. We answered your questions. So on that, actually, let's um, that email. Let's check the emails. Yeah. Let's see what. Um, Who was it again? When, when she up from North or something or Manny? So that one in particular, I can't remember. There's a bunch of questions. I think there was someone called Ellie from I want to say Leicester. Uh, there was a couple of other people. I can't remember who, who they are now. Off the top of my head, sorry. Um, but we definitely enjoyed answering your questions, uh, particularly questions around you know um, the questions? star signs and. Do we, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what would we eat? Or if we had a thousand pounds, what would we spend it on? It's really interesting to, to get even like, I've known Michelle for years. How long have we known each other? A while, man. Since what, year nine? Yeah. But it was really interesting to be able to get another insight into you and do you know what I mean? Um, are we nearly hitting 10, yeah, nearly hitting 10 years, mate. Yeah. So since then, actually, let's, 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 I've been checking the email. We've got a couple of questions. So Amy Maloney from uh, London says, Hey guys, what are your thoughts on conspiracy theories? Is there any you believe in and why? Love you thoughts there's hella conspiracy theories man there was a time when i was just on youtube conspiracy theory 
you know, all that. You might get shadow banned, but all this uh, <laughs> Illuminati stuff, all that, man. You think it's real? I don't know, man, to be honest. Mm. I, don't, I actually don't know. These conspiracy theories, you see a lot, man. Like, um, am I allowed to mention the flight? What flight? You know that flight that went missing? Go on, what's your conspiracy theory about that? Oh, no, no, there's conspiracy theory in that there was someone on, on the plane that was proper, like, high tech or had some sort of rubbish or uh, patent pattern, whatever you want to call it. And they killed him off. But I don't know, man. People just make some rubbish up. I don't really look into it. It's a YouTube video. If I did my own research, probably find something. But yeah, I don't really look into it. Man. I think when you get into that space of YouTube, it's just endless of conspiracies everywhere. Isn't it? There's a couple that I suppose I'll mention. Um, one is what we spoke about off air when we, when we recorded the um, the uh, buying a council house episode. We spoke about off air that you know this 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 policy was introduced on purpose. Because uh, at the time, it was introduced by Margaret Thatcher. At the time, during her government, they were being plagued by a lot of strikes, mm. a lot of minor strikes in particular. And um, what you... You don't earn money when you strike, okay? Um, and you don't have a mortgage to pay when you're a renting tenant. So if you make renting tenants and give them the ability to own their own home, they now have a mortgage, which means they're less likely to strike because they have to pay their mortgage, otherwise they lose their home. Mm. Uh, could you count that as a conspiracy theory? I don't know. I think nah, so. Is it conspiracy theory? That's just political. Because they would say it's like leveling up and it's, it's it's boosting the economy and all these sorts of things. But really, the conspiracy is that actually this is to suppress the working class and any revolts from them. Yeah, you could say, I guess. Another but one. It's not, it's not a, what does it say, a well known one, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. Well, now it is. Now it is. And yeah. let everyone know you heard it here yeah. first on the Before Our Friends Die podcast. And then she's going to come get you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she, she ain't, but anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, the next one was Charles Murray and the bell curve theory. So, uh, there's this thing called the bell curve, which is commonly accepted actually, even, even now, even though it's been disproved. And, um, basically it was used to inform a lot of the policy in the Bill Clinton administration in America. Mm -hmm. And what it basically said was black people are inherently less intelligent. They're more likely to have children young. Um, they're more likely to be predisposed to crime and all these sorts of things, right? Oh, bollocks. And what that meant was that... Um, Wait, what, how long ago was this? This is like 90s, bro. Oh, okay. So it's not even that old. Yeah. Uh, early 90s. That also meant, therefore, that Bill Clinton and his administration took this advice on board. This is Charles Murray. Let's make sure his name is known. Charles Murray, a new right um, uh, academic. Um, so uh, that then meant that that administration disinvested in black communities mm. yeah didn't invest in their schools didn't invest in their healthcare systems didn't invest in their social systems which therefore meant that yeah. they weren't supported and there was an inherent um uh, uh disadvantage for living in an area with black people and being black because you just weren't supported by the system that book and that theory by charles murray informed institutional racism now could you call that a conspiracy theory that it was intentional it was on purpose yeah i think so yeah 100 percent. that reminds me of that video that i've seen i don't know how true it is um what's his name man the chancellor who uh um, R rishi, rishi sunak, sunak. yeah he, he, there was a video of him in like in a park with all these rich people oh yeah 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 and he's like you know what we're gonna take the money from the poor and give it to you guys and we're gonna invest it in your areas basically he said yeah like the, the, like the labor government put a lot of money into deprived urban areas uh, and didn't put it into areas like this, which is like some really nice area. I think it was Tunbridge Wells. Like, come on, bro, they don't need the fucking bro, money. Bro, they don't why. need the money, man. They're, like, what's going on, but man? This is all in, this is all intentional because you know, obviously they look obviously up. Obviously, he wants the votes in it. He wants yeah. the votes and he wants the power in it. Yeah, it's it's, it's mad, bro. It's mad. But and I'm assuming people give money to them, don't they? Like, yeah, they donate. As, yeah, yeah, they donate, don't they? Um, just to be clear as well, Charles Murray was completely disproved. Like his research was flawed. Like there was no element of truth in what he did or said. Um, yet but they tried to board. make it true yes exactly that's what they did in it they tried to make his point true so i think not, yeah i think we do believe in conspiracy theories. there's some more like we won't even mention like um do you know, do you know that song by uh, michael jackson dirty diana yeah love it same <clears throat> I know song. we can't say anything else about that do you know what i'm saying oh <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah whoa 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 well i'm talking about um everyone. oh yeah i love everyone as well man yeah. who's your favorite the lewis hamilton who's your favorite, theory, huh? who's your favorite? Uh, uh, lewis hamilton yeah same hmm. Um, so yeah, a couple of things we can't say, obviously. Uh, Michael Jackson, was he killed? I don't know, man. I saw his ghost, though. <laughs> yeah, I can remember that video. His ghost was walking about. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. 
Oh uh, yeah, that, that was a mad conspiracy that I watched for a while because he died in when I was in like year eight. Yeah, we was twelve years old. Yeah. Yeah, and we were just, I was just on I remember that day, bro. Yeah, Mine, didn't it? I yeah, that. everybody. Oh my god, Michael Jackson's dead. Bro, I was on the bus. That's bro, crazy, shit, bro. That's crazy. Everybody oh, in my headphones. Dum, 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 dum. And Dude. you know when Man in the Mirror come on, get very upset. Man in the Mirror. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, um, I remember, man. The year eight. I think my brother got the text because YouTube wasn't banging like that back then, yeah, was no, it? No, 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 no. My brother got a text. Yo, Michael Jackson's dead. No, nah, you're lying. I saw it on GMTV. You know what I Then I went. I think I put it on like you know Sky News. There's that channel. There's News Twenty Four Seven. Yeah. Bang, Michael Jackson's dead, fam. Do you think? I don't think he was killed, you know. I hope not. Not, not intentionally. I don't mean like, but he was definitely killed by that doctor, Comrade Murray, yeah? He gave him better job. Yeah, he killed him, but that, and that's a court of law. I'm not being accus accusatory either. But he got down for that. He yeah. was probably accident, first of all. And I don't think it was any sort of, hey, Michael owns half the Sony publishing rights. Let's kill him off. Mm. I don't think it was that. Maybe I'm naive, but I don't think it was that. I hope not. Do you? Let us know. Akinsofish at, uh, at gmail.com. Please do let us know what your thoughts are. The guy went down though, did he? Yeah, Conrad, Conrad Murray went down. How, how long? Not long, I think he's out now. Oh, Their man was doing up interviews and doing up books and come on, man. Oh, All right, here's another conspiracy theory. Do you think Michael Jackson's kids are his? Is that a, is that a thing? I hope. Oh, they do all look a bit different, but we don't know their mums, innit? Yeah, I think we do. No, we don't. Debbie sent them, innit? No. Uh -huh. I'm sure that's name. I swear he didn't release no mums like Ronaldo. No, he did, he did. He did? Mm. I'm not sure, you know. Yeah, anyway, let's not get into that. I don't want to, you know, they're still alive. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, what else, man? I mean, any other conspiracy theories? There's bro? loads, isn't it? There's but, a few around. Um, but definitely we're going to get shadow banned. Right, I can't it. say it then. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, that one's yeah, a mad. That, that was a bit of a mad. Did you see what he did, bro? <laughs> yeah, that one there, I think that's a genuine. That is definitely yeah. something. It's not <laughs> genuine. Look, let's just say some events in our history have been very convenient to therefore go into a land and extract resources and minerals from them. Is that fair to say, Russia? We just got shadow banned. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I hope not. So, Amy, if we plummet in if our numbers, you... it's your fault. I see what you did there. Oh, that's not what I meant. Right, moving on, swiftly. <laughs> yeah, let's move um, on. <laughs> looking down the back of the sofa to revisit Hager Zora 10 years later. Russia! To this day. Let's play that tune. Hey, we'll get bang. What? Nah, I'm joking. Bro, listen. Nah, hey, hey, we'll box you up, bro. <laughs> um, he took his kids the other day to the KSI. KSI, yeah, 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 yeah. I see that, I see that, I see that. That was um pro probably one of my favourite episodes because we planned it for time. We knew what we wanted to say. We put in a lot of research, a lot of work. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, that, that was... um That era of boxing was lit. Bro, that era was amazing. Even in like... <laughs> Again, in the latest boxing news edition that I read. Um, How much you pay for that? Four pounds. For a month? A week. A week. I don't buy it. I buy it every now and then. I only bought it because this looks it. <laughs> I don't want the guy in the back. <laughs> yeah, okay. forward. Um, also, look at the inside. Sorry, guys. We're sh I'm showing you a magazine you can't see right now. Inside. But by Inside. By the boxing news. The imagery in there is amazing. Yeah, um, isn't it? That's where all these pictures go. Yeah, bro. Look, look, look. Ready? I never see them online. Look at this picture. I want to show you one second. I want to print this off. You know, I'm better. I want to take this out and frame it. But look at this, bro. It's a poster of um, Fraser versus Sonny Liston, yeah? Yeah. And a fight that never happened. But if it did, what would happen? And like, it just looks sick, bro. Anyway. Hey, Chisora. We obviously covered this in a podcast. Episode 12 of the Sofa Sensei's podcast. And so make sure you check it out. It was an amazing episode. Even David Hay himself, the oh, Haymaker, yeah, yeah. he Shout listened to, Hay, to the man. episode and he said he found it hilarious. So, if you need any other endorsement, let it be that. Derek Chazura has yet to listen to the episode, we believe, but we will get there one day. Um, so, uh, Ryan Walsh, who was a former British featherweight champion, um, he was asked, what is your favourite heavyweight fight involving a British fighter and why? And he said, David Hay versus Derek Chazura. It had all the pre-fight drama and um, was a precursor for the stadium era we are in today, which is very, very true. Without that fight, we wouldn't have had the AJs and Wembley and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, uh, my brother, Liam, Liam Walsh, boxed on the undercard. I'm a huge Delboy fan, so I was gutted to see him knocked out in the fifth round, may I add, by David Hay. Um, uh, and it rained, prompting Hay to wear trainers. It had a bit of everything. It was what do you mean, trainers? Hay wore trainers in the ring. Like normal trainers? Yeah. What trainers? I think it was like Jordan's. Sick guy. Yeah. Oh no, my battery's dead on my laptop. I need to charge that. But um, yeah, yeah that, was, that was a good fight, man. And to be honest, have you ever seen a fight, um, the build-up like that in a while? No. 
But it had violence, man. Bro, it had bro. violence, excitement. Like, I don't know about you, but I haven't watched a press conference now in, in, in a long, long time. Nah, man, they're a bit boring now, man. I try and watch, like... Um, I, I try and watch Chisora's one because you know he, he can go left anytime. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Am I the main event? <laughs> Derek, um, we've already signed the contract. Eddie. <laughs> Am I the main event? Uh, Derek, I mean, um, Adam, do you want to answer that? Uh, so, so, Derek, we've got some great fighters here. Uh, we've got Josh Taylor, Regis Pro Grey, the best, um, or they lightweights or whatever, in the world. <laughs> um, Derek, it's going to be a great night for the fans. Eddie, if I'm not in the main event, pay me some more money. Otherwise, I'm not going to bring in a bunch of fans to the O2, set up the O2 for these midgets. <laughs> you just fucking with no Vaseline. Bro, Chizora. Did bro. he say? Yeah, I'm getting fucked with no Vaseline, bro. That's a thingy line. Uh, easy E easy got e. fucked with no Vaseline. Ice cream, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, if we weren't getting back before, we are now. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, the only... The thing it was a good press conference. Amir Khan and thing. Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was yeah, pretty yeah. good. That's because they're both dumb, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were just having cuss fights. <laughs> you're, you're, no, I might be the <laughs> Some of the bars were very yeah, mad, yeah, yeah. mad. They're like, yo, you need to chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was a great episode, man. Really, really loved that. Uh, the feedback was amazing. Um, I think I'll, I'll go back and I'll watch the episode again. You know, like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. me, that's a, a real nostalgic epi um, episode. So thank you for being a part of that. There must be like a documentary that you put. There must be a documentary on it. There's a well, four-part like, series in the lead-up to the fight, yeah. Yeah, there must be. And I was going to say, yeah, that would probably... When yeah. he was still driving Mercedes. Mercedes? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Then he got one-sided, like, something. I think so. I think. Uh, watching UFC London live. That was our first video escapade we showed, you remember? Yes, that's when I was having a curry. Um, is this a thingy's fight? Did Paddy the body. Paddy. And, and they got the Mon Rolexes. Molly McCann, did they? They got the Rolexes. Oh, well, good he one. got the Rolex. I didn't see her years, but he got the Rolex. She got a Folex. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. Mad. It was you know, mad. my sister knows Molly McCann. Molly McCann. How? Oh, uh, boxing team. Gabriel! Come in quickly, please. This is that impromptu. Uh, You're forcing so, her to come on a mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got her gloves on us, man. Yeah, punch you up, isn't it? Hello, hello. Come on in. What are you You're right, yeah? yeah? Introducing Gabriel, uh, boxer or, or, or amateur boxer. Um, quick question. You know Molly McCann, don't you? picture of her and she follows me on instagram go nice. on yeah molly mccann follows gabrielle on instagram and like just just to say like she liked the picture of she me didn't she hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. if you want to come and el test my chin with your elbow let's go let's go we'll be a little sparring <laughs> yeah sick. molly mccann shout out molly mccann shout out gabrielle how did you mean you mention it in the episode no oh, you, had, you didn't mention that in the episode no i forgot where we were talking oh, about things here um, how did you meet her like how did you interact with her um i was at a show and then she was there and then i went and got a picture of her uh you're right mate <laughs> what's your name and then, um, <laughs> she followed me on instagram she, and she has a lot of um she trains you know she trains in bournemouth like if you go in the gym that like, she's she'll probably be there sometimes it's a bit weird i don't know why she trains me and michelle just hanging on outside she, I think she grew up in Bournemouth some, for some reason. Wow. She, what, she's a fake she got a fake person. accent. She actually talks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her that, bro. You got an elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People's elbow, bro. It's true. Uh, well, thank you for appearing, Gabriel. What's your Instagram? If people want to follow. Um, Gabriel, uh, dot o underscore dot o three, I think. Okay, I'll put the link in the description down below. Because <laughs> yeah, ain't yeah. nobody remembering yeah. that. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel. I'll see you soon. Yeah. I'll see you in a minute, yeah? Um... Perfect. So that was great to uh, to get Gabriel That's on sick, to work on Yeah, man, it was sick, bro. You got a direct link now, yeah? yeah. Couple, couple hey. links. Hey. Uh, making the Before Our Friends Die theme song. That was the episode one of Cool, Fine, Done, Wicked. Oh, yeah, that was uh, you, innit? Going breakdown. That was yeah. mad on the app. Shout out that app as well. Whatever the app was called. Garage Band. Michelle. You made this one. You didn't make this one. Craig made it. But this is the theme song for Cool. Fine, dumb, wicked. Shit. This song, this beat wants me to make me a rapper, man. <laughs> this is sick. <laughs> no, of course, I made. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah! Hey, the thing from that to. Yeah. Uh... You can see her dancing, man. Grab your girl, let me whisper in her ear. Say. 
Hey. So, so we broke down the making of that and if you haven't heard it, it is episode one of Cool Find Done Wicked make sure you check it out for us it was really enjoyable I think you know being able to break down what it is out, you know um, I don't know how you did it I, I, to be honest well, I know how you did it but I don't know how you did it on an app if you want, to know, if you want to know how I did it yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's really enjoyable I loved it um, it I, takes talent though I'll tell bro, you that it takes talent man I, when, we, when we've wrapped up with this I'll show you more more, more music and we'll, we'll figure out what we can break down yeah. Troy is going to come on to break down the, the um, break it down that theme song Craig is going to come down um, one day and talk about this so we'll make sure we get um, an insight for all of them our listeners them beats are too sick bro very, too sick okay, they're all sick yeah just come on uh, well, all right, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah a, a fantastic um, time for us even like in terms of our social media strategy we're called Find Done Wicked we did the one minute breakdown of the of the um the theme song as well so we gave you a one minute insight on our social media page at cool find done wicked on instagram mm. to give you an insight as to how we made it or how i made it so yeah really good stuff also rachel bro yeah. do you remember why cool find done cool find done wicked is called cool find done wicked yeah craig david what about it mm, album so at the end of rewind ah uh, he drops some he bars says, cool find, find done, done wicked. wicked yeah do you think that that was just out of the blue? Yeah. It's just studio. All right, save lads, yeah. I'm gone. Do you know who produced that? Who that, produced it? That whole album. Oh, should I know this? Mm, don't think so. Oh, okay, then I don't know. Artful Dodger, Mark Hill. Oh, I swear. He, he also produced... Mm, you know I'm into that. Did he? Uh, don't think Wait, ain't Artful Dodger the thing you want there? They're a duo, the, yeah, but... The, uh, the, 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 does the ambulance outside or he got shot? Mm, no, I don't think so. No, what's Artful Dodger? Then? I don't know. Artful Dodger is... um. Yeah, moving too far. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that one. one. You've got um, obviously rewind. Yeah. You've got what you gonna? Bear, bear. Oh, let's let's just Google what I've got here. I'm trying to think, man. Uh, do you know who I'm talking about? You know the whole city one or the ca- casualty one. That's um. I don't know who produced that, but I know yeah. yeah Someone's yeah. getting shot. 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 Now who are they called? There? I can't remember. It might it might be them, but I don't actually know. I don't think it was them though. So. Garage. That was Bro, lit. they made bear tunes. And there's someone in there's someone in Dark for Dodger called um, Mark Hill, yeah? Mark he Hill sounds funny. He played that live. Mark Hill. Yeah. He produced this the Born to Do it album. I oh, swear. Yeah, all the guitars. He's uh he was in an orchestra. Bro, like man's a strings guy in it, and you can hear it. Sick R and B producer, sick um, Yeah, he likes lines. Yeah. Sick uh what do you call it? Garage producer. Bro. Rewind, movie to fast, woman trouble. Do, 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 do. do Has he done anything do. recent? I feel fantastic, bombastic, ecstatically astounded. Do you know that tune? No. Nah. Um, Has he done anything recent on his new album? Mm, not really. I mean, there's a tune with um, Shaka called Find Space, which is sick. Um, yeah, bro. Bear tunes, man. Anyway, we'll go through that. We, we, may, mm. we, we might review that album one day. Yeah. But anyway, he followed us on Instagram. Which one, Mark Hill? Mark Hill. Did he? Verified everything. Swear. He followed. Do you know why? I DM'd him, innit? Uh, I DM'd him. Says, Please follow me. No, says, <laughs> you might recognise the name of this podcast. Yeah. It's from the end of Rewind. Really appreciate your musical influence and everything. Yeah. And we're going to we're gonna make sure we honour you, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he followed us. Did he reply? No, I don't think so. Uh, but he, he replied well, with the follow, innit? And, um, you know, I shared one of his um, breakdowns for, because um, he, he broke down Fill Me In. Um, oh, did he break? How it? he produced it, yeah. yeah. And that's, oh, that's sort of stuff I'm fascinated by, innit? So, did you did you get the idea of breakdown of your thing from his thing? No. Okay. The idea of breakdown's been around for a long time, but I've always been interested in. Um, I want to know how things are really done. Yeah. Like, I really want to know how it's done. I love sampling. I love. Um, but most production. of the so- new songs now are all sampled, man. Yeah. I love vocal arrangements, and maybe we could talk about the the, the, the plight of sampling on an episode of Cool Find and Wicked. Yeah, yeah. Remember that uh, because. The, I was watching on TikTok, like there was like 10 songs that I'd like yeah. in now that are all been sampled and yeah. the sampling is mad because you just speed it all up yeah, and you can't even hear it, but it's there. It's mad. How well, hopefully they get paid. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It depends who owns it. Mm. Depends who owns it really. Yeah, that's true. Um, house renovations. Yeah. This, we filmed this like, it feels Mom, like a year bro, ago. Bro. Yeah. It feels we filmed like it a year ages ago. ago in the winter, bro. It was, not it? Yeah. Shit. But what good episode. It doesn't sound out of date, does it? No, shout bro. out to Evie and bro. Um, Do you know I didn't tell you, bro? What? I don't know if I should reveal this. Drone. I will anyway. I will. <laughs> so we put that episode out. Yeah. And it's grown really, really well. And we went there, filmed a few bits. It's all on the um the. Yeah, uh, you went on there, no? You went on. Uh, you were talking little, little man, innit? Yeah, um, Maxwell. Maxwell. No, this is when Maxwell was little, wasn't he? He was looking at the first house. Yeah. 
the first. Oh, was that the first? I remember that was Jer- that was Jerome's favorite. That was Jerome's favorite memory from the first renovation. It was Maxwell going around saying, "You need to cover that hole. Yeah. You need to get rid of that spider." Yeah, big man, the spider's moving in. What do you mean? <laughs> um, but he was yeah, he was really really young and he's giving all that advice. And we put that on the uh, check out before our friends die. On yeah, Instagram, he's mad little there, there, man. Check out Aki and Swordfish on Instagram as well. If you're enjoying this podcast, please do leave us a five star review. We really appreciate it. it Helps us out. Is he in secondary yet? No, he's ten years old, so he's going to be secondary uh, next year. But my, my first nephew, Kyron, he's going to a secondary school now. And um, or he will be in September. And it's just scary to see him growing up, man. It's really cool. Is it? Yeah. Is that your... Brother's son. Brother's there. Yeah. That's crazy, Shout man. out, Kyron. Um, but yeah, what am I saying? House renovations. Someone at work listened to that and pulled me aside. like, Kyron, can you... Um, can we have a word? I said, yeah. What's Give me the fucking builder's <laughs> number now. <laughs> Not that aggressively, but yeah. certainly that was the question. Yeah. I gave them the answer. And they're going to go and build um, a whole house for them, I think. Is it? Yeah. Did it? Did it work out? Yeah. Oh, sick. Hey, we we charge a commission of 2%. That's what I'm saying. I says, hey. I says to Eva, I says, listen. Hey. Obviously, you got to give my little couple percent of that. Like. Yeah, we take two. Yeah, I'll take 2%. Of like, what is Two is literally what I said as well. Is it? I said, give me a little 2%. Yeah. That's not bad, dude. the profit. Referral fee, you get me? 2% of what? I don't know how, like, extensions, 80 racks. I don't know how much houses. I'm not even That's like sixteen hundred. Let's not even let's not even venture what? into numbers. No, I'm just uh, saying like an extension is like eight racks now. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, what, I'm sure MPS can do you a better deal if you want to get into, into touch in touch with it. Let <laughs> yeah. me know. Uh, but yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Yeah. I'm really really proud of that moment. You know. Sick. When I heard that, yeah, she mentioned Kavan's name and we went out and checked out. It was a really great deal. She's like, yeah, you. I got your number of Kevin. Yeah. Kev, yeah. Discount now, nah, bro. It was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more now. Um, <laughs> but now, really really good. Like to say, yeah, like. We helped people, and that's what this is all about, isn't it? That's bro? magic. Having right? those conversations and letting people shout know. Out, shout out, who's it? Your colleague? Colleague, yeah. Shout out your colleague. Shout out Holly. Really appreciate you listening, and um, hope you enjoy. And hope, hope you get some Don't even mention there. that you mentioned Holly until she comes to you. Yeah, you said my name the other day. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Holly. I really appreciate you listening. Thank you. Um, next, we did Eubank Ben uh, in the garden. Um, Nelly had a wee about six minutes in. <laughs> yeah, that was when I was straight after work. Yeah, it was live. Off, yeah. So you can watch that video on our YouTube channel. Uh, and on Spotify as well. We're also on Spotify via video. Mm. Um, and we predicted you back then. Predicted AJ. Um, you said we predicted Michael uh, Bennett Page. I think I was right, right? And the is it team? No, I think. No, wait, we, I I never said AJ was gonna win. Yeah, but you did say you said was gonna knock him out. Okay, okay, I did say okay, I did say that, but I still got the one that yeah. winning it. Um, you said AJ was gonna win. No, I didn't. Yeah, you didn't. No, I didn't. You fraud. Go check the videos there, mate. Yeah, yeah. Check, check the tape. Um, <laughs> Michael Bennett Page. We both said he'd win. And he didn't. Oh, it's dead, man. I'm um, bro. I think Usman got bang in the neck as well. Pound for pound, eight shot, dead. That's how Leon Edwards talks, isn't it? Yeah. I should shoot in your face, you dickhead. Is yeah. it, did he drop that bar? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? That's thing, isn't it? That's um, one of them voiceover things. Tintin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, what do you, what do you, what do you mean, Tintin? Tintin. You pussy off. Yeah. I should shoot in your face, you dickhead. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. What. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Leon Edwards. I've seen him. Leon Edwards well. is the world weight champion in the world, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Come on, Usman was knocked out by a head kick, bro. It wasn't even a head kick, bro. It was on the neck. Neck kick. Neck kick, bro. Uh, so yeah, that was a uh, episode uh, fourteen of Surface Senseis. So yeah, we'll come back with uh, what was it episode twelve of Before Our Friends Die and episode fifteen of Surface Senseis. So straight after that, bro, we got into um, Before Our Friends Die. We got to know Jerome and Evie. Jerome's biggest um, inspiration is his dog. Um, Evie's. Did he say dog? Yeah, Jerome said his dog, yeah. What was the reason behind that again? He just loves him. He's got the mo- I think he said the most potential, actually. I think he said. <laughs> the dog has the most potential. Yeah. <laughs> it's respectful. <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? Um, but no, it was really good to get to know them. Um, yeah. I mean, any, any, any comments on you from like, you know, how it's been two seasons in? It's calm, you know, man. It's been. I think it's been going on. There's been ups and downs. Yeah, for sure. Because what time time management is key, man. And you know, imagine if this was our full time job, innit? Yeah. Inshallah, one day it will be, innit? But I mean, imagine we didn't have the work, the nine five. Sometimes you got to put in hours and time clash and just family stuff. That's the. I think that's the hard bit, innit? Yeah, I agree. Get it, getting to sit down because I think once we sit down, it's calm. Literally, well, we've got content for days, bro. Literally, once we sit down, it's calm. But sometimes getting here is the hard bit. Yeah. Like today, um, what we came at nine, yeah. we had a little warm up convo chatting about anything, and then yeah, boom, we're doing it now, aren't we? Yeah, 
But I think that's the hard bit, and I'm not gonna lie to you. And obviously, Cavani does put in hours, and slightly I'm getting there on the social media thing as well. Yeah. I don't get man. I got what 14 likes or <laughs> wait, what was it 14? Yeah. So, so if yeah. anything controversial is said on the <laughs> yeah, that's me. Twitter, do you know what I was gonna do? Me. I was gonna do yeah. Is every time I tweet. So I'm going to put hashtag R. Yeah. Did you think, get me? I think we should. Yeah, because you don't want to get in trouble. Right. Watch me put hashtag K. Look, <laughs> yeah. I'm, trying to put, I'm trying to build relationships with boxers. I'm, trying to, I'm beefing boxers. <laughs> I'm trying to let them know I'm on their side. I'm trying to, you know... Um, that being said, I was harsh on Tyson Fury and Tommy Fury at the end on, on, the, on episode 15 and stuff, as I said, you know. Which, talking of episode 15, let's get into it. Um, it, was, oh, it was filmed. So it was me talking to the camera. Did you watch it? No, I didn't watch one. I didn't watch it. No, which was this one? I wasn't the, involved. The latest, yeah, you weren't involved. The one that you recorded on YouTube yeah, that's yeah. got bare views. Yeah. No, nah, I didn't watch that one. Mate. I need to watch it, man. I watch it. I watch it. Wait, if you're in the comments, yeah, make sure you the, make sure you write to my show that he needs to watch episodes that he's. The, not is in. this the AJ one? Yeah. The recent one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I clicked on. I, I did click on it though. I was in London when he released that. Innit? Don't need, I was busy with weddings and that. Innit? Don't need clicks. But all I'm it. saying, all I'm saying, when I clicked on it, I was like, yo, this brother's got sixty views already. You know. Fam, it's right now. That's our biggest episode ever. And no, no, that was me just clicking on it. Like I saw sixty views within the space of I don't know, not too long. That's our biggest episode ever, and it is now on, um, one hundred and twelve views. That's not bad. In man. seven days. That's not bad. Which man. is our biggest rise. And ever. sixty of it was on like probably the first day. Yeah. When I clicked on it. So it goes to show the power of talking about relevant events. Um, but yeah, it was a fantastic episode. It's something that I just filmed here and right now on my iPad. I was harsh on um, I was harsh on Tommy and Fury. I said, I said, Wait, why him. were you harsh on them, man? What did they do? I said, shut the fuck up. Yeah, let me play it. Let me play it. I'd even play it. While we're talking, Rochelle. What? Uh, because they were tweeting on AJ and that, or? They were just chatting shit, man. Like, <laughs> Connor was doing nuts, though. Yeah. Connor was Fam, Connor was doing super mad, bro. Why is he beefing him? Who? Why was he beefing them? Um, is it Carl? Who is it? Was it Carl? Probably drugged up, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't know. He was whiskey, then, proper then whiskey. It was scrawny neck. Never, I never, 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 right. never, 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 but an amazing night, an amazing, amazing tale in terms of of skill. You, you, should, you did this in the morning, didn't you? The next day, because you were at the party, weren't you? Was saying, How yeah. could you beat me? But he's actually saying in a compliment. But obviously, if you're interested, Rochelle, let them know where they can follow us on, on, on social media while I listen to this, yeah? Oh, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss this. It's Akin Saltfish on Twitter. No, digital. is it Digital Network? On it's Akin Saltfish. Akin Saltfish on Twitter. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know how Kavan remembers this off by heart now. You know what? Let me go on Spotify. Right, if you're interested in following us on social media, please do visit at Before Our Friends Die Pod on Instagram, uh, at Aki and Saltfish on Instagram. We've got other shows at Sophie's, Sophie, Sophie Sensei's and at Cool Find Dumb Wicked. <laughs> He's got it. On Twitter, we are available uh, at Aki and Saltfish. And on email, if you want to get in touch, ask any questions, let us know your thoughts. It is Aki and Saltfish at gmail.com. Please leave us a five-star review. Share it with some friends. It really helps us out. As I was getting to episode 15, the last episode of season two, we, or I, went in on Tyson and Tommy Fury. This is what I had to say. Ready? My Wi-Fi is moving mad, by the way. Here we go. About, um, you know, coming out of retirement. Uh-uh. My data. Nothing's working. Sorry, guys. Might just have to cut this bit out, you know. <laughs> yeah, you won't have to. Right, when it loads. But why, why do you tell him to shut up anyway? But here we go. Um, but yeah, he's clearly under pressure. Fury, we didn't mention Fury, but Fury um, did a few uh, uh, posts about, um, you know, coming out of retirement. I could beat both dosses in the same day. Shut up. Let's just, bro. I just up, said, man. shut up. Every bro. time he talks. It's boring, man. Like, bro, you always come back and chat the most shit. I'm retired. I'm not retired. Alfred Derek saw two million. I'm retired. Now he's a dust. Bro, just do what you got to do and shut your mouth. Like, you could have just stayed quiet between April and now and said you want to fight Usyk. That's the normal path, right? Then you said you want 500 million to come out of retirement. Then you said you'll fight AJ if it's only free for everyone. You're like, shut up, man. Really annoying. Um, 
But, but what a fantastic bite him and Yusuf would be. We'll get into that nearer the time if it does ever get announced. Um, talking of Fury chatting shit, Tommy Fury came out talking nonsense about, oh, um, Jake Paul, let's get this fight on. Bro, please conduct your fights and conduct your business in private. Because as, um, what's that guy's name? Stephen A. Smith. As Stephen A. Smith said, I'm, I'm here, here to tell you right now, we, we don't, don't care. care. Yeah? Two fumbles you've made w in terms of that fight. So just do it privately and let us know when the fight's on and we'll watch it. Because we will watch it. It's going to be a fascinating fight if it ever happens. But until then, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully. And man I said, how can you respectfully shut the fuck up? <laughs> so yeah, that man have been pissed hey, me off recently. Nah, bro. And like I said, yeah, I ain't trying to beef any fighters, yeah? But you man are actually annoying, man. Man said, shut the fuck up, <laughs> respectively. But the joke is, yeah, the Fury thing, I know why he's doing it. He's doing it for the bag. Uh, yeah. He's doing it for the money. Yeah, but yeah, I know, but I know boy, it's, it's jarring, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Innit? I'm coming out of retirement to bank. <laughs> so I'm coming out, yeah, uh, all of this. You've got you seven days and I'm back in retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Retiring, shut up. Them man, them man in the back room, like, yo, we we'll do this contract. He's like, but um, they hollowed on King for the contract. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, yeah, I know why Fury's doing it, yeah. Cool. I understand that and he's trying to get his money, but what's his name? Tommy. Tom fuck off. Tommy, yeah, just fuck off, man. You're bullshit, bro. Jake Paul will bang you, innit? Woo! You think so? I don't know, innit? But I, I I'm not gonna lie, I think Fury's scared, innit? Or oh, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy's scared a little bit, innit? Mm. Because bro, what did his dad say? If you lose this, <laughs> you're not my son and you should retire. Boy. Yeah, well, bro, I think that's a great way to end it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a season two recap. It was great to recap season two with you. Do you know what I realised as well? We um we had significantly less guests on season two than we did on season one, um, which means we're learning to do it ourselves, which is great. Season three, we will bring back as many guests as we can. Um, what gonna, it is, it's time schedule and bookings and it's everyone. Time and yeah. scheduling. But bro, we want to get as many people on as possible. We want to have as many conversations as possible. We've still got so many more episodes in the can that I've never even seen the light of day yet, mm. but they're ready, they're there, they're ready to go. Um, as you can tell, we're dibbling and dabbling in, in, in video episodes. This one isn't a video. This is Rochelle and I talking together because it is 9am. I'm not being funny. We look a little bit rough, but that is what it is. Talk about yourself. Yeah. Um, we will eventually get into doing consistent videos and, um, you know, really proud of where we've come. I feel like we've grown a lot. feel like we've developed a lot. There's so many things in the pipeline, so many opportunities. We How can long have we been doing it now, man? Our first episode came out on the 27th of January. No, that, that was the first episode, but when did we start it? Around that time, like a week before. Was that a week before? We oh, just no. fucking done it in a week. Dashed it out. And then, out. And then our second episode came out in 25th. Nah, March. we didn't. Remember? We did, we did, we did, we did. Remember, we bagged bare episodes no. before. The first one was Lunar New Year. That came out right away, 27th of January. And what was the next one after that? 25th of March. How does it make sense? You just April to March? No, January what? to March. Oh, Jan, Jan. Oh, yeah, it makes much sense. So we, yeah. we put out the Lunar New Year one because Lunar New Year yeah, was, was in February. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we waited got all our episodes in the can, then we launched properly in 23rd of March. Then we released episodes in, in March, April, May, June, July, August, and September. Well, September not even yet, but this will be out by September. So we've done it. We've been consistent. We've done 28 episodes in the can, two external episodes with other uh, organizations uh, still produced by the Acting Selfish Digital Network. We're doing our thing. This is what we wanted. I'm very pleased to be doing it with you. And let's keep working hard and making sure it works. Good, man. And that is it. That is the Before Our Friends Die Season 2 recap of the Acting Software Digital Network. I've been Kavan. I've been Rash. And we'll see you again sometime soon. soon. Alright, take it easy. Love. Alright. Come on, trying to get some royalties in this. <laughs> trying to get some royalties. <laughs>